Who are we? Nobodies. Speak for yourself. Okay. We're Canadian filmmakers with the dream of surviving financially on the backs of our films. Welcome to our show where we bring people along on our film journey. Maybe, maybe we can learn a thing or two. Maybe we can teach people a thing or two while drinking beers. I mean, if you can't drink beers while filmmaking, what's the point? We are Fable Forest Films, failing our way to success. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I mean, our show. First frames first. Welcome to episode 5795 of First Frames First. And we haven't even aged. That's right. My name is Adrian Konstantin. Mm, I like this. I like this name. Special I am guest star. Derek, also known as D-Man. Derek, also known as Derek. <laughs> or Dickhead. Uh, no. Nobody calls you Dickhead? No. Mm. Not to your I face. Used to be, uh, I used to be Dicky. Oh, you did? Yes, I'm admitting to that. Oh, yeah. that yeah. Uh, is a terrible nickname. Yeah. Dick, Dicky. Yeah, Dickhead. Wow. Not Dickhead. And I'm Jason. <laughs> Welcome to First Frames First. Yeah. The Fable Forest Films podcast, where we track our film journey. Yeah. Uh, every second week, every second Wednesday. Uh, sometimes I love the idea of having a couple of these podcasts like stored up. Yeah. So that we don't have to. Do Panic. one at the minute before. Do one on a Tuesday night before it's due on Wednesday. Yeah. That never happens. Who though. picked the day? Why Wednesday? Uh, Middle of the week? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why we picked Wednesday. Because it's hump day? Probably. You guys were being a little freaky? I don't <laughs> think so. Oh, no. I don't think that that... I don't no. think humping had anything to do with it. Okay. So this podcast is basically tracks our journey as we attempt to become filmmakers that make money... A living oh, wage. Oh, I thought you were going to say make films. Yeah, yeah, make films, but make films that make money <laughs> yeah. and th that generate a living wage for us. We're able to support ourselves on the backs of our movies. Mm. That is something we have not been able to achieve. No, but that day will come. It will. Well, not when you drop all of our checks in the snow <laughs> outside of the Muay Thai gym. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have to rely on random strangers picking up our checks and totally. delivering them to us afterwards. So our quarterly earnings of $31. <laughs> it fell out of my bag oh, at gym no. and landed in the snow. Luckily, someone that knew us picked the check up and mm -hmm. gave it back to us. So that was good. Let me tell you something. We need that $31. <laughs> <laughs> really bad yeah totally that's a whole pizza remember i remember <laughs> that's i that's like, I, that's like that's lunch, large. lunch for four people yeah i don't really want to name names but i we had an issue with um if you guys have been listening to this show for as long as we've been doing it we definitely talked about this situation at one point but we had a uh, company that was making dvds for us mm -hmm. of bickerman's grove mm -hmm. for our gala that we did they made a big mistake on the prints, uh, on the uh, cover art, on the back. They had to redo them all. And uh, they said they were going to give us $80 back. It was like a quarter of the cost or something like that. And uh, they just never did. They said, yeah, we're going to cut you guys a check for X dollars and just didn't. And I think that that's how you do it in mm -hmm. business world. You go, oh, no, for sure. We're going to cut you guys a check. And then just don't. And then you just and like, then and then you just to hope them, that, yeah, to make to put up a stink. Right. Totally, it's a very sneaky way to do things. I kind of fought with them for about a year, off and on, mm. and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, darn, did we not send that?" And then they just wouldn't send it again. Finally, I like emailed every email address in the company, so like not only did the like top dogs get my email, but so did everyone else. So I was like, "You guys are." Anyways, we got the eighty bucks back. Oh, you did. And I was like, I was like, you know what? We need that 80 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was hard Absolutely. fought. It was. Hard one. What are you going to do? And do you know what? It went into the right place, wherever it went. Went into our PayPal account. Yeah. Perfect. So it's, it's sitting there waiting for us to use it. Amazing. Nice. Now, Anywho, <clears throat> Derek. Got to get your money. Why uh, Why don't you tell us? We're drinking Sleeman's Clear. We are drinking Sleeman's Clear. Why don't, you, why don't you tell us a little bit about Sleeman's and... Uh, tell us the history of Sleeman's. 
right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> didn't they just? Didn't, right. Weren't they just sold? Wasn't this brewery just sold? I don't even know, to be honest. But I have a friend. Yes. Her name was Sybil Lawson. Okay, and Google. She oh, works we don't for. Have, we don't have the Googs. She works for Sleeman Brewery. Yeah. yeah as yeah. a representative, and uh, she has offered to help us out in our production mm-hmm. with. Uh, Supplying us some, with lovely some beers. beverages from uh, Sleeman's. Let me tell you something. And we are very happy about this. It's going to help. I'm especially happy about this brand. Yeah. The 2.0. Only 80 calories per beer. Oh my and God. Only the salesman comes two out. Grams of carbohydrates. Hello. And this is good for someone who is trying to work on their physical health and mm-hmm, such. Mm-hmm. This actually is the first beer I've had in about three weeks. So this is going to go straight to your head. Your dickhead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We bring it all the way around. All the way back around. So, I'm um, sorry. Um, so now, that brings up the next, the major topic of this discussion mm-hmm. is that we are gearing up to shoot the second half of Shifted. Yes. Boom. Finally. So, uh, production's coming back so around. So pumped. Yeah. We are how many weeks away? Two? Two weekends away. Two weekends away yeah. from starting. And, Less than uh, two weeks away. Yes. And we have the schedule out. Weekend one half. Tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, we got to get a move on. Yeah. One and a half weeks until we shoot? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, it's panic time. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so... <laughs> so Holy shit. Yeah. So we have... Um, our f- and the, the thing is that we did finagle the schedule a whole bunch mm-hmm. um, to, to make sure that everyone could be here at the right times. Yeah. And what ended up happening was we wanted to... We always want to start out with a small day... And try and knock it out the park, but that's not what we. That's not how things worked out. We have a huge day the first day. Yep. Mm. And we have a really tough scene the first. And we scene. have a huge day the second day. But it's gonna be a good time. But we're sh- we're shooting on weekends, so we have so we do. It's not like the one day and then directly it's the next day. Correct. Right. It's the Saturday and then the next weekend. Then we've got that Saturday Sunday and then the next weekend we've got a Saturday. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's getting pretty exciting. Uh, if you guys take a look behind us, the basement, the kill zone. Uh, there's blood on the ceiling and on the floor over there. Um, are you ready to uh, to have your basement back after, uh, yeah, after eight finish. months or whatever? Yeah, and I will say that the number of various technicians that have had come had to come downstairs and do something on the house, like we've had. Um, like an electrician came in to put a plug in and so he comes into the room and we've got blood splatter everywhere and i'm like okay so this is just for a movie and everyone's like okay cool and they go about that nobody phones police nobody's worried you're just like yeah it's a movie and i feel like you could probably get away with a lot of things <laughs> it was like, all right movie yeah. it is well right do you guys remember do you guys remember the scene that we did in the winter in the forest mm-hmm. where we had some blood oh, in the yes. snow yeah and some people were walking their dogs past and they were like, oh, shit. And then they looked up, and one of our cast had, like, blood on them. And they were like, are you okay? And then we had to <laughs> let them know everything yeah. was fine. It was, it was a fake movie. blood. And Please look over there. You'll notice that there's a camera. Oh. Yeah. I okay. mean, so, so the joke reigns that if you're going to do a crime, just take a camera around with you. Yeah. And then if anybody asks, like, what's going on? You're like, oh, it's just And if you are committing a crime... Don't fall. first frames first. <laughs> how to get away with murder? Oh, season seven. I don't know how many yeah, shows. Yeah. Have you ever watched that show? I haven't. No, not me either. I don't like procedurals. How about you, D Man? Never checked it out. No. Are you? Do you like Law and Order and all that kind of jazz? Uh, yeah, I've given them all kind of a go, and then mm-hmm. this was just another one in their chain. And I thought, uh, how many of these can I watch? Yeah, that's the thing. Like the problem is, you're like, well, this is gonna go on forever. Yeah. And be so, pretty much the same, you know, yeah. the same yeah. writers. So, you know, it's going to have the same feel, the same flair. Well, that's, I mean, that's branding and, and that's yeah, good I, because I, they have their good, audience. But I've watched your other five. I'm going to move on to something different now. Totally. I have heard that the Chicago series, there's like Chicago mm-hmm. Fire, mm-hmm. Chicago mm-hmm. PD and Chicago Med or something yes. like that. They like intermingle with each other. And I heard that they're all really good. And they're also they like Dick great. Wolf, and like, I, I, like Law I and Order. Do you watch those? But again, that dif- gets difficult. You you fall back on one and then catch another. And now what's going on here? Oh, right. Now they're mingling. Something's yeah. going on. And the same with Supergirl and The Flash and Green So and I, and Lex and I watch The Flash. We love it. But... 
you watch a whole bunch of the flash and then you realize you need to watch the arrow and the arrow is not on netflix so you're well, like right because they do their crossovers and then there's stuff you've missed yeah yeah oh. like it's pissed me off too. the wedding of the flash we missed i'm like all right that's dumb you guys are stupid right the show is called the flash and you're not gonna have his wedding crazy i'm not gonna watch the flash don't do it i'm gonna i refuse he's too skinny to be the flash i did just finish watching uh the fourth season of gotham on netflix the young batman have you guys checked this out it it's pretty great it's very cheesy like Mm. so if you watch one given episode you might be like this is stupid right but um if you like batman Mm -hmm. and you like the because batman has a lot of villains like Mm -hmm. a lot over the years and they they do this really cool thing where they weave these characters in and out of the storyline yeah um and and uh it's pretty great even so even you got bruce wayne as a young man and so it's the story of like from him when he saw his parents die for the next five years so it's kind of before before he became a hero oh yeah he's not batman but like alfred is a badass right and it's it's the story of penguin and the riddler and like uh the becoming yeah when they are taking over gotham and stuff like that's that that's awesome yeah it's pretty it's pretty again like i say it is cheesy it's like a kid's superhero but it's it it's also pretty dark oh, like cool. there's a there's this one guy i just top of mind this one episode where he's making jim gordon the the hero make a decision between saving two different people's lives and he mm-hmm. goes for one and this guy drops like a like a, one of those crane balls on like a wedding couple just and they just blood everywhere just, and actually like, squishes and they him. they've got the joker kid and he like knifes people and it's huh. it's actually kind wow. of gory for like a kid's show um it's but really also not a kid's show, but more a teenager pro- show and they're okay with that stuff yeah yeah nowadays they're Pretty all good. watching all that jazz they are yeah and i will they're tell bastards. you yeah pretty good. good characters nice yeah. i like it there is too much to watch I, that's that's the problem yeah, yeah every it, time i get together with you guys you're talking about something oh have you watched this you check this out yeah no i have about an hour and evening well to this watch is the something. thing so i've actually i've actually compiled a list of the must-see movies okay and i'm actually going to use trend uh, i'm actually going to use other podcasts people who actually critique movies hmm. to decide what are my must see movies and i'm not going to wait for what netflix is going to give me so i have now decided and i've actually started i'll go on to google play through my smart tv yeah. i will order the movie that i want i will pay for it and i will watch the movie that i gotta watch you in order to be it. in order to be an informed in, an informed filmmaker can i absolutely make another suggestion no <laughs> You should, if you're going to watch the oldies... Yeah, I'm going to. You should watch them in the perfect format. Now, what you need to do mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. get a VHS player. No, you dummy. No, no Jay, you're such a dork. <laughs> so, I'm just telling you, you could get... You don't even have to pay five bucks. You could get them for okay. 50 cents. But let me ask you this. Yes. When you say oldies, what are you talking about? I don't know. Do you want to watch... Uh, uh citizen kane mm-hmm. or king kong or mm. two thousand leagues under the sea or you're raging about, bull you, you are talking about the all these oldies eh? that's, that's yeah. twenty thousand leagues under the sea mm-hmm. did i say ten thousand leagues you said two thousand well you're they were only going i can dive two thousand that leagues. was a short film version <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i have i have compiled a list of a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the movies that i haven't seen yet that are important that are, that are classified as sort of important movies to have seen so i'm gonna go through those i'm gonna watch those i'm excited hmm. amazing so d-man yes as uh, in preparing for your role mm-hmm. you shifted the round two yes uh what are you doing i've actually been really working on my physicality that's right because you look good why well, thank you i hope you're working on your lines mm-hmm. oh <laughs> yes mm-hmm. i'll get to that <laughs> No, it's been great. Uh, I wanted to bring myself around both mentally and physically. And I'd had the pleasure of doing some CrossFit with uh, one of my daughters Mm -hmm. who does it for track and field. And uh, the Polsky gym where she does that at, the one time said to me, you know, 
you know, you're sitting here for an hour while you're watching your kid do this anyways. If you feel like it, next time bring some workout clothes and get in on the exercise. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right on. I'll do that. Of course, she was like, really? Like, Honey, you do your thing. I'll do mine. Don't worry about me. Yeah. You know, nobody here cares. You How know? old is she? How old is she? 14. Yeah, she's yeah. 14. So she she does not want you working out no. with her. But it worked out just fine. Yeah. And then uh, I, I found myself to really enjoy it. And uh, I spoke with them and asked them if they would help me out, knowing that the film was coming. Mm-hmm. And I said I wanted to prepare myself physically, get into a good state of mind, a good body, just everything ready to go for this uh, for the movie. You know, a lot of actors do it. Yeah. They get into that mode, carry themselves into film ready. Totally. And I wanted to do that 100%. And they uh, they offered me a free membership during that period to train that's cool. to get ready for the film and in with us making a little mention in the film and the credits for them mm-hmm. you know derek's body by polsky gym or whatever cool which you know was awesome of them to do and i'm totally. very pleased by it yeah and it is very uh, nice. my cousin joel who is also into bodybuilding himself yeah mm-hmm. has been giving me tons of advice on diet so for a month now i've been eating nothing but chicken and rice and eggs and hamburger and Mm-hmm. protein drinks in between stuff i actually have been eating more food than i thought i would eat mm-hmm. and losing weight mm. it's fantastic you stopped the everything else <laughs> the, the junk, beer the sugar alcohol sugar yeah yeah, yeah you have to you you can't beer no <sighs> but if you're gonna be you can't bread sleeman's but if you're gonna beer <laughs> sleeman's 2.0 yeah I'm gonna no it, it's been great uh, and how how do you yeah. feel? I feel fantastic. I really do. That's what happens. Yeah. Hey, that's what happens when you get cooking. Yeah. And you yourself have been getting into a little something, something totally for the physicality. Yeah. So Jay and I actually started doing Muay Thai. So we we you did were doing the Muay Thai too. I was not aware. Sorry, Jay. Not a boy. No. Well, the thing is, Jay has hurt I've himself. O- I hurt myself. Right. So I've only been, I've only been once since we got back. You've been twice a week for the last. The three three weeks? weeks? Yeah, three weeks, yeah. And yeah. it's... it. So they try and murder you with push-ups and sit-ups. <laughs> 100%. And That's it's their, amazing. Yeah, that is their goal, yeah. is to try and uh, make you crawl on your hands and knees out the door. I think well, I think the idea is, um, you know, it's not just about technique. It, the, this gym, TKO, and if you guys watched our uh, Art of Eight Limbs Muay Thai fight documentary, it was one of the gyms mm-hmm. in there. And they train people how to be fighters. So yeah. one of the thing is one of the things is um, just pure cardio and stamina. Like you have to be able to yeah. last. So mm-hmm. you know the sheer volume of workout that they put you through. I mean, my first time back in over a year, I used to do it with Lex at a different gym, and I was dying. It was amazing. Right. Yeah. And do you know what? It, no, I remember that. Yeah. And some of the kicks were causing you some troubles back then i i think i'm gonna be okay there yeah that's good i've got all kinds of problems but, uh, <laughs> but we're taking care of one problem at a time so the feet problem should be good yeah so um so i've been feeling amazing but i will tell you something else that has made me feel a little amazing and i've been vegetarian all january really yes i did we went now we don't consider ourselves vegetarians mm-hmm. so when we did go we went so to you and Heather uh, have been doing this together yeah the whole family oh nice and um the the girls too oh, but yeah. we will throw in if they go like we'll throw in some meat into their diet a little bit more because they and, and we we are supplementing with protein like other things right there's lots of protein that doesn't have to come in the form of meat totally now i will say that i feel awesome now, I don't know. I don't know if it's also the Muay Thai, mm-hmm. also the working out. Combination. Combination. Sure. But I'm kind of hesitant to like start eating meat again. When I think about eating meat, it makes me a little bit sad. Hmm. Yeah, so here's totally. the thing. You don't have to return to eating meat. No. It I... doesn't have to be like a month of vegetarian-ishism and then afterwards go back. Totally. Like you should, you should eat in the way that makes you feel good and healthy. Mm-hmm. Totally. Right? Like right now... I'm eating no carbs because I'm trying to drop some weight because of this stomach problem that I'm having. And uh, the thing is, again, for me, it doesn't work for Anne. So it's very strange. I think she, she's not watching, but I think she cheats. I'm not sure. I asked her the other day. I'm like, do you eat, do you put milk in your 
tea? Do you have like a little piece of chocolate? And she's like, well, maybe like a little piece of chocolate, but that doesn't count. And I'm like, yeah, it actually does. Because you, you, once you get – it's the keto thing, yeah. right? And this is – like everybody fights over whether keto is good or not. Keto is fine. You know what keto is? Meat and vegetables, right? It's just no bread, no pasta, no rice, no potatoes, you know, no sugar, my, no beer. My fiance right. oh. has been on keto Hey-o. Hey-o. for a little while now. Segway. And has lost 35 pounds. Yeah. Keto only yeah. without exercise. Yeah. Hmm. It will do it. So. By eating right. And yes. Yeah. So, congratulations. Shush, shush. <laughs> let's, let's just explain. Let's back up. <laughs> let's back up here. Let's back this train up. So, Derek Lackenbauer, mm. at the tender age of 67. <laughs> and I look fantastic. <laughs> is uh, now engaged. I am. To Tracy. Tracy. Who is his longtime partner. Yes. And uh, it, we, when we first met, you told me that you planned to ask Tracy to marry you. Mm-hmm. And... You have just asked her to marry you, and that was pro. We met probably seven years ago. Yeah. So it's been a long it's time. Been, it's been a long Let time. Let me tell coming. you, when Derek says he's going to do something, <laughs> he <laughs> does it. Seven I years. I mean, it's going to take a while, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to get done seven you know times. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I proposed to her on our tenth anniversary, and uh, it was funny. Uh, she had given me a little ultimatum. Last year. Oh, she did? Uh, jokingly. I yeah. mean, come on. She wasn't really going to Sort of me. jokingly. <laughs> I mean, do you see this body? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> but she said, okay. if, if, if we're 10 years in and you still haven't proposed to me, I'm out. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay. You, said, uh, <laughs> you realize ultimatums don't work very well on guys at all. We kind of take that as, fuck you. <laughs> you know? But here I am, our 10th anniversary, and now it I'm worked. engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, worked, it may have fine. worked. Ultimatums she... can, work, can work. She told you what she wanted. Yeah. Well, she yeah. was like, this is what I want. Yeah. Communication. And, and I wanted it too. In every As loving relationship. Ago, it, was a, it was a case of the right time. Yeah. Communication. It's, it's all about key. timing. And timing. Yeah. And it communication. Yeah. And, and, communication. So, and being able to hear what the other guy says five <laughs> seconds earlier. That's fine. So, um, Heather took the picture of the wedding ring that she wanted and she put it on top of my work desk. And then, uh, so I knew exactly what ring it was. You're like, we've been dating. We've had three dates. (laughs) And then I still got the wrong ring. (laughs) (laughs) Did you really? Oh man, my engagement story is a horror story. Yeah, but you were all romantical with everything. I totally, you did, with all the notes and everything. totally. I went, I went big, and actually, yeah. I went too big. By the end of the whole thing, she was exhausted. Uh, and then I whipped out the ring, asked her to marry me. She was like, "Look, I'm gonna marry you." And my my wife shoots straight from the hip, right? No <laughs> ifing about. Look, I'm gonna marry you. Look, I'll what? marry you, but this ring, I don't like this ring. <laughs> So like, and honestly, you've been dicking me around all day long, and I'm tired of this shit. I'm fucking tired. So I was like, okay, cool. This is the saddest day of my life. Wow. And then uh, and then we got the ring changed, and I proposed again, and it was amazing. But nice. that taught me that it doesn't go right. The f- it's not like the movies where it goes right the first time. Oh, it's always perfect so, in the movies. So, on my first date I was with my best. wife, I went to pay, and... Uh, my bank card didn't work because I didn't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing. And I had to go um, back by the way. <laughs> to our table and ask her to pay. She did. And still is yeah, and with you. And we've been yeah. together for a long it time. Since. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So 20, 17 years married. Yeah. No, this is amazing. Yeah, that is a long time. You have been married a long time. Yeah, we've been together almost 19 19- 19 years 20 years and it is a, it, and the thing 1999 is, so it'll uh, be 20 years a lot of people will be like that doesn't sound very long but the thing is that you're not you're not 40 years old yet no right so that that it, that's a you met that's, young, that's half your you, life yeah you yeah. married young we, we met we met when i was 20 yeah yeah i mean that's awesome wow that's great yeah all right team good um, talk what good else shit. you have on your list here what's this process of getting ready for shifted Okay. Oh, Let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because you've been doing things that I've never done very before. Very cool things yeah. that 
after having done them now, you, you're feeling like we're not going back, right? We'll never go back. So this is, so we talked about, I mean, you guys have heard us talk about the fact that with Shifted, we, we wanted to shoot a movie in like a weekend. And then we started throwing a bunch of rough notes together. And we're like, we're just going to wing it, right? And we got a bunch of actors together that we thought could improvise. And we're just going to, you know, but as we kind of got closer and closer, we started building the story more and more. But it wasn't really a full script. It wasn't a complete ready script at all. Mm-hmm. And that was something that we learned where we're, we're still happy that we did it. Because we're making a movie, and it's going to be pretty great, actually. Yeah. Um, but we've really kind of struggled along the way with a few key things because we weren't very prepared. Mm-hmm. But talk about the next thing that you've been working on. Yeah, so so for this section, I just had the script available to me. For the first section, we didn't have a script when we started because I suppose we were we were stuck. I was stuck. I couldn't get going on a, on a new movie. And so we just said let's go here's this idea let's go mm-hmm. and then we we the pieces fell where they were cuz we needed to, the balls needed to roll right yeah but now with now we've had we've had this hiatus for 8 months as we wait for this waited for the seasons to come back around again for it to start snowing again for everybody to get ready again and we had the script so i was able to go through the script and do all the due diligence that directors are supposed to do and i now know that this is what directors are supposed to do. My personality is just fly by the seat of my pants. I'm like, yeah, sure. When we get into it, we'll work it out as we go. Kind of fluid. Let's just all like make it happen. Right. But I know that you actually don't, I don't think you get the best results by doing that. Because, you know, you, if you give it forethought and you think about it and you think about it and you change and you come up with better ideas and you change your ideas and then, and this is all in all in the planning and the storyboarding and the deciding, and this is what I've been doing this stage, right? And, and so we, and we've been... witnessed many moments where you've had those pondering moments of, damn it, I wish I would have done this differently. Well, totally, and I don't know. And I... with proper planning, now you can do things. Differently. Yeah, you wanna. But the, the, something that resonated with me is I just heard somebody. I was listening to an interview uh, uh, and another director talking, a very a, a director who's knocked a, a film right out of the park. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing they said was they uh, they had they would spend three weeks just talking over the storyboards with the production team, so that everybody was shooting the same movie. And I was like, "Hell's yeah, that's huge. That means that." So Jason and I, so Jason's producing the movie. So if we sit down and we stare at the storyboards together and talk over the storyboards, you and I are moving into when we're actually on set for the first day, we're shooting the same movie. Right. You know what we're trying to get. The DOP knows what we're trying to get. The Like if the actors take a look at the storyboards beforehand, they know what we're trying to get. And if they don't, we can inform them. Totally. Yeah. It, it's like, it's such a useful tool. So anyway, I just... Um, I worked on a, I worked as a camera, as a camera assistant, I worked on a show called, um, impact. And I just remember the director had this huge folder. It was huge. It was so big and full of things. And I was like, I mean, it's not, and I, and I knew that it wasn't the script, but I didn't know what it was, but now I know what it, what it is because I've done that myself. I took the script, threw it into a file and I started putting all my notes for all the scenes that we have yet to do storyboards wardrobe makeup props all that stuff is going into that file and the file fattens up and all of a sudden you're like look how well planned i am and i feel so stupid that i haven't done this before and i'm sure everybody else that's directed anything everybody else that's directed something is like duh but to be honest if i had the script and i had the actors and i had the cameras i was like let's go do this thing let's go guys and that was my personality, but now I suppose I'm You're learning. I'm learning, yeah. and it's yeah. I'm really excited because I yeah. think for our next project, whatever that is, when we have the script and we sit down and we break it down, we can now. I feel like we can make art, right? Not just shoot a quick movie. You can actually be like, let's make this as good as we can. Mm-hmm. So you're not like, hey, grab a quick shot of that. You know, mm-hmm. whatever it is, right. you can plan to shoot the shots you need in order to make the perfect version of your movie. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. 
I am really excited because I feel like I've, I feel like it's just a step up in in the process, and so I'm excited to see how this uh, works out. So next steps for us, um, I think then we're gonna try. I don't know how if this is gonna work out, but uh, next podcast we do, we're gonna try to have uh, all the cast. The main, the main a cast, cast. Podcast? a cast podcast, cast podcast. <laughs> a, I like it. A podcast, um, on the first day of shooting, because it'll be the Saturday before we do it. We post another podcast. So, nice. um, before then, we gotta. This house has to be put back in order. It's gotta. We gotta go back through screen captures and grabs from to make sure we put everything Wish back in I'd place be able to be around to help you guys out but uh he's going on vacation oh you're gonna might, be on might holiday be in mexico oh, I'm he's, sorry. <laughs> he's a dickhead so uh, so there's that and then once you're back we're gonna still do a rehearsal with uh, a couple actresses that we have not met yet so it's a little scary um but it should be fun yeah and uh for outside of our first because outside that, of our, our first shoot weekend and then what so, a day in the following week yeah probably yeah okay and uh so just for a scene that we had to push back um from last year so we didn't even get a chance and sometimes i don't know i'm probably a bad communicator i think i'm good but maybe sometimes things slip um but uh, i forgot to tell somebody that the movie was still like going or on pause or and i don't think she was watching us on facebook and everything like that so she was like oh i thought you guys just didn't want me anymore so when i reached out i was like <laughs> no anyways so but yeah. she's back on board yeah yeah, yeah. oh good Whew. yeah that was a close one so we were almost looking okay. for a new cast member so but we're oh. good oh wow yes all that, good that in the hood <laughs> yeah no nah, i mean a few scenes to reach you no 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 you, it's gonna be good good so a lot of prep and planning, and uh, we had a sit down uh, last night. Yeah, with um, with our DOP, so we could just go over the scenes that we're gonna do and talk yeah. through some logistics and camera angles and that kind of stuff. Michael, Michael yeah. Malco, and uh, this it it did show us we we rejigged the sh- the schedule a little bit, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Rejigged it, and uh, it did show us how much we have to do, and it's it's good to it's good to. To walk into that, walk into the first day knowing that you got to fly before you like, you shoot, you, you, before you've even rolled the camera, you know that you have a tough day ahead of you. Yeah. So that you can hit the and that's, running. Well, that's I mean? why we're yeah. going to have some pre setup. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. And, and some more communication. You know, com- I did coming notice up. that even with our last round of shooting with this film, though, as we were working on a set. We actually were ahead of the game, and the next set was being created. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and set up. Yep. Yeah. Which one of my boys which, will be here taking which care of everything? Big time. You yeah. Know, totally. Did. And and because we had a lot to get in in yeah, those days. Totally. And I will say that even for this, we we wherever we can break off a splinter unit, where the second camera can mm-hmm. go and start doing other things, yes. we're going to attempt to do that because um, we do have to get it all. Yeah. This is it. Yes. So we'll have our main man, Zach, who you guys have seen on previous broadcasts. So once we're shooting something, we'll send him to set up the next thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to fly. But you know what? Month of February, we get this uh, picture in the can. Some people get to shave their beards. Finally. I actually might keep mine. Yeah, you should. I think I look terribly handsome. You should grow a beard. Or at least a soul patch. You <laughs> Well, you guys have seen my beard. That's right. And uh, it's, Tracy it's pretty much two tone. Hates it. Yes, she does. I mean, Anne hates this beard, but you know how long I've been growing it? I know. And and not taking care of it. No, like, it's just I'm just becoming the... a, a wild yeah. man. I mean, you you, you like may call me because you're Jedediah. Do you know what? But I got I did not get an ultimatum. I got uh, told to groom it. It wasn't an ultimate. It was like, go groom your beard immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> then he it. did. And then I did. That's an ultimatum, actually. And, and how is uh, how is Big Mike's beard? Is it uh, coming back Fabulous. Nicely? Yeah? Wonderful. Fabulous. Yeah. He Perfect. he did the needful. He, it's it's back. Right it on. was it was touch and go. We, yeah, were, yeah. we were worried. But it's it it's back and it's wonderful. Because you can't just like... 
Bing bang bong, grow a beard. <laughs> no. No. And no. he'd he'd been sporting that one for some time. Totally. To get yeah. it to where it was at. Yeah. So it's back. It's burly. And uh, awesome. it's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Nice. All right, gentlemen. All right. A nice little podcast, thirty four minutes. Yes. Very nice. Quick. Beautiful. Let's I let's enjoyed wrap myself. It up. Thank you for having me, boys. And Thanks for sticking with us. Damn, um, I look forward try to something. If you if you stuck with us to the end of this one, try. I don't know how you guys listen to this show, but let us know somehow. Uh, if you're watching it on Facebook, uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, um, or if you're actually just listening to the audio version, that might be interesting. Uh, I don't know how many people listen to it. Uh, the audio, actually, I do know, um, but. Um, I don't know on like iTunes and Google Play and, and such and such. So uh, leave a comment or uh, write a review or something like that. However you listen to the show or watch the show, put a comment out in the world and uh, share it with someone. Or let Jay know just how many times he says like. Ah, am I back to saying like? <laughs> All right. In the you're beginning like, of the you're podcast, like a 13-year-old in girl. Podcast, I am you going will realize to... that Jay often says the word like. If Adrian would... Cut these episodes again. He could put like a like counter. <laughs> it would be quite cool. Ding, ding, you ding, had you had a few in there. Ding 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 ding. Too? Yeah, I did. I also had yeah, a thirteen year old bad, girl inside but... me. Well, let's see uh, when Derek's on the show next. <laughs> <laughs> you may never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, dream big, work hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching First Frames First. Yes. First Frames First. Thank you, Jason. Welcome. If you enjoyed, head over to our website, www.thefableforest.com. Check out our films and sign up for our newsletter where we will send you exclusive content. Hit us up on our socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, always at The Fable Forest. And share our show with your friends. It'll really help us out a lot. Dream big. Work hard.